Hello, my name is Joe Kuttner, and I'd like to show you the few steps that are required to get most Ruby web applications running on the JVM with JRuby. To begin, I'm going to use RVM to set my interpreter to the latest JRuby version. I like RVM because it lets me use normal Ruby commands like gem, bundle, and even Ruby itself without adding anything JRuby specific. Next, I'm going to move into the root directory of an MRI-based Rails application called Massive App. This is the example application used in the book Deploying Rails by Tom Copeland and Anthony Burns. I'm going to port it to JRuby. The first step is to install the JRuby lint gem. This gem will provide us with a tool for analyzing an application's source code and checking its compatibility with JRuby. Once the gem is installed, we can use the jrlint command from our application's root directory. It will statically analyze all of the code in the project and check it for common gotchas. The tool has identified a problem with our database adapter. The active record adapters that we use with MRI usually include a lot of native code that isn't compatible with JRuby. That's why JRuby provides the active record JDBC adapter which sits on top of the very powerful, mature, and secure Java database connectivity libraries. To use it, we'll need to edit our gem file. First, we'll comment out the old adapter. Then we'll add a new dependency on active record JDBC adapter. We also need to add a vendor-specific gem. For this demonstration, we'll use JDBC SQLite, but we could easily replace this with JDBC MySQL, JDBC Postgres, or any of the other vendor-specific gems. Next, we'll run Bundler to install our new dependencies. Now we can check how things are doing by running JRLint again. Great, our source code is ready for JRuby. Before we move on, Let's initialize our SQLite database by running our migrations. The first thing we'll notice is a warning about OpenSSL. We'll address this in a moment. Now that our database is ready, we can run our application on WebBrick by executing the Rails server command. We'll see the OpenSSL warning again, but we're going to ignore it for just a little while longer. Now that the server is running, let's open the application in a browser and make sure everything's OK. Good, everything looks healthy. Let's return to our console and fix that pesky OpenSSL warning. The problem is that the default OpenSSL library depends on a lot of native code, just like the database adapter. We can fix this by adding the JRuby OpenSSL gem to our gem file. Now we'll need to run Bundler again. The next time we start the server, the OpenSSL warning will be gone. WebBrick is an acceptable platform for development, but we'll want to use something more powerful for production. In my book, Deploying with JRuby, we'll use three different kinds of platforms to run JRuby web applications. For this demonstration, we'll use Trinidad, and we can start by installing the Trinidad gem. Trinidad is a lightweight JRuby web server that provides a very similar experience to what you might expect with Mongrel, Unicorn, or Thin but it won't require a dozen or more processes to handle requests concurrently. With the gem installed, we can start a server by running the Trinidad command from the application's root directory. As the server boots up, you'll notice that it's starting an embedded Apache Tomcat container. You'll learn what this is in the book, and you'll also learn how it can help the performance of your applications. The server is up and running. Let's open the application in a browser again to make sure everything's healthy. Good, everything looks just like it did on MRI. 
but under the hood is a much more powerful engine. Because of the JVM support for native operating system threads, we can service all of our applications requests with this single Trinidad process. There's no need to spin up extra servers in order to do things in parallel. In the book, we'll extend Trinidad by adding several modules that allow us to run background jobs in the same process. This means that in addition to web traffic, we can handle asynchronous tasks, scheduled jobs, and even additional applications with a single JVM. The result is a much simpler runtime architecture for JRuby applications, which can lead to better performance, easier maintenance, and longer uptime. Thanks for watching this demonstration, and I hope you enjoy the book.